I'm on Pretty Fedorov and I'm joined here today by Imperator Fedorov. <laughs> and we're doing a Hello. We're doing a tutorial for all the members of the United Nations of Aurelia who want help um making vignettes. Uh we're both co owners and founders and if you're not in the community, there'll be a link down in the description to join. It's a Discord roleplay community based on Roblox. Uh you make your faction, be creative, whatever. So yeah, let's get on with the tutorial. Lighting is very important. So as you can see in here, the lighting is pretty darn bad, if I say so myself. Um, it, it is easily fixable by going into this here, your explorer lighting compatibility. Um, per personally I prefer shadow map, it's pretty good, and future lighting is also pretty good. If you're going to do future lighting, you've got to make sure you have really good, really good lighting and illumination. Alright, uh, the next thing is cinematic camera. This is very important for taking good looking uh, vignettes and photos because if you take it just in studio it's going to look pretty pretty bad to be honest. Um, so it's to en enable it you have to go uh, play mode shift P on your keyboard. And I personally like to, uh, you can sc uh, scroll in with your zoom to change the field of view. Personally the further in the better it looks in my opinion. Next thing we have which is very important is plugins. Plugins can help you do all the stuff for making vignettes look good, which Roblox Studio cannot. So I personally like the 3D text plugin. I'll just show you what it looks like. You can type out words which become meshes, you can customize it. So if you want to write out anything in studio, well, it'll also looking good. Change the material. Yeah, there you go. Alright, so hello. My name is Imperator Fedorov, and I will be, uh... I forgot what I was going to say. It doesn't matter, just keep going, keep going. <laughs> you can cut it out, are you right? Yeah, 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 just keep going. Okay, what if I, like, what if I, like... Uh, All right, what's up, guys? Just uh, another thing that I forgot is you can also not only change the technology of the lighting, but you can change all aspects of it. I'll give you an example. So, if you want the light to like a tint of a color, you can just mess around with lighting. You know, if you want it blue like you're underwater, or brownish red like you're in the desert, you can do all that type of stuff. Um, you can change the overall brightness. You can change like um, how much it blends in with the background. You can change the outdoor ambient, which just changes like the setting of the um, outside ambient. You can change uh, how strict and soft your shadows are. If you want them like one, they like really, really soft and blended in. Zero, they're quite um sharp. You can change the time of day. If you want to make like a night vignette. Fog. Fog is also really important. I love using fog. <laughs> um, yeah. So you can make like, I don't know, like a forest in like foggy winter or if you're doing underwater vignettes and you want something like slightly transparent in the background, you can do something like that. <laughs> So the main thing that makes a vignette a vignette is positions. You can't have a vignette without positions. Basically, positions are really, really easy to do. All you have to do is go into the uh, actual person. You can uh, move the head like so. Oh, there we go. You can move the head in any position you want. You can you move the arm in any position you want? Uh, move it. Like, you can rotate it. Do anything you want with it. But if you're really not good with making positions or tactical positions, you can just take a free model position from right here and dress it up as your character, like so. And boom, we have a makeshift position right here made out of free models, which didn't take that long. And yeah. So the next thing on the list would be field of view. Personally, I think field of view makes your vignettes look ten times better. I can't fathom making a vignette without altering the field of view. So what you would do is you'd locate workspace. Right under workspace should be camera. You'd enable properties on the top right. Click over here. And once you have properties enabled, you scroll all the way down to field of view and you alter it. I'd usually use 25. You can go lower or higher. 
it, it depends on what your uh, what's in your image and stuff and this makes your vignettes look 10 times better after you did the field of view the next thing would be particles particles really give your vignette a more of a live feeling um, you can either do a screenshot vignette, which uh, would be a still screenshot, and uh, uh, it wouldn't show much movement, or you can do a GIF. GIFs really bring out the the, uh, the the sort of movement and the sort of like atmosphere of the vignette, if you know what I mean. So we can start off by going to free models. Free models are fine when you're using particles, and you look up particles, and there are many, many particle sets over here. I like to use flame particles for my vignettes, and uh, if I have something on fire, there's a lot of really, really good stuff. Um, there's some lightning stuff over here. Uh, there's some red stuff over here. I don't know what you'd use this for, but in my opinion, particles are the best. You can also alter them. Um, I use dust particles for uh, my outside stuff. Let me get this one right here. This one is really good. You can size it up and do anything, and it, and it fits really well in the ground and stuff once you have... Uh, uh, a terrain and uh, yeah use particles particles are really cool all right so I an example I have of particles being used is in this vignette I made not too long ago this dust particle I showed off earlier was perfect for the environment it showed off a uh, uh, it really bring the firefight out and made it look uh, uh, somewhat more intense I use this dust particle for almost everything um, as you can see I use some smoke particles over here dust particle right here and it just makes it 10 times better. You can also use uh, uh, parts as effects. That's why I made a, a little muzzle flash thing here on the gun. And I also used another particle to show that the bullet was hitting the wood. So particles are a really good feature. Please use them. You can use as many particles as you want. Just don't make it look uh, overly stupid. So the last thing I have to show you guys is camera tricks. Now camera tricks include a lot of things like sun rays, color correction, bloom effect, and blur effect. So the first one we're going to go over is color correction. Color correction is really well because it turns, it tunes out the brightness of a vignette, the contrast, and saturation. Saturation, you can turn it all the way up in order to give more, your vignettes a more saturated and colorful look. Or you can turn it down to give it more of a, uh, an ominous and a, a, a sad sort of vibe. Contrast mainly affects the shadows and the lighting. And I really like this feature along with the brightness because these two are a really good combination. You can also change the tint color. This is really good for if you're making a vignette on a different planet and change up the overall atmosphere of it. The next trick I have to show you, and personally my favorite, is depth of field. The depth of field effect is my favorite because it can do this. It blurs out the far region of the map, making whatever's in front of you the main focus. You can also play around with this and make some really, really, really cool stuff. It's personally my favorite and makes your vignettes a lot better. A depth of field along with FOV, as I'm going to show you right now, they go together like peanut butter and gel jelly. Absolutely fascinating. Now those two are the main ones. You can also play around with the sun rays and other bloom and other stuff, but those two, depth of field and color correction, are my absolute favorite and will make your vignette 10 times better. Now unfortunately Roblox Studio doesn't allow you to already see depth of field that's why you have to manually enable it by going into studio settings you go into rendering and you make sure your edit and quality level are both at level 21. Once you set this at level 21 you should be able to see depth of field in studio. Thank you guys for watching if you guys are interested in the community server all the information will be down below uh, subscribe if you want there'll be more tutorials and other you, uh, Roblox related content coming out. Anything you want to say in prayer to the fifth Um, uh, I hope you guys found this tutorial very, very helpful. Be sure to join the community. Link down below. It's very fun. We all come together and make fictional stuff. Um, uh, that's it. Shout out to Art. Shout out to the better off. I love you all. Bye. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs>